my camera over. Okay, so I really screwed up my camera position. Okay, so this is uh, the next version of this. Um, as you can see, we've gone back to the the ships being made out of little blocks. Um, somewhere on here, you can set the heading of the ship and the speed. Oh, I see. That's really weird. You've got to drag it in a direction. So we've got some basic particles, which are um, these particles here are provided by um, uh, the the regular particle system in Unity. Uh, the ship's made out of blocks. There's these little guys here. If I just slow down so they can catch up. Um, the little guys that were following us are little mining drones, so I was playing around with the idea of resource collection. Um, so they've got themselves stuck. Stupid little drones. Uh, so basically they go backwards and forwards between the ship and asteroids, although they've glitched out. Yeah, awesome. So we've got a orbital camera. The centering seems to be a little bit off. Uh, that was the last thing I was working on, but that's nice. Needs the grid. I think the grid would make things a little bit better. It's got a. Uh, this is a skybox, like the standard Unity skybox. I basically just set the ground and the sky to be the same color, and it's ended up with like a an interesting, weird, uh, like not quite the Milky Way. What I'll do is pull in the skybox asset from the other game. Uh, the asteroids are made out of cubes, and if I zoom out, the, we should be able to see that they're on a grid, except you can't. So if I just speed up the ship. No, I don't want to shift as a sticky key, you bastard. Um, see, the ship is now moving along, and we should get asteroids loading in and out. So this works on a one kilometer squared grid um, and the the map system every time you move a grid square it then updates the uh, it loads in the, 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 the surrounding grid squares so you end up with like a three kilometer wide play area that's constantly updated. The map squares are generated using a, a random number and the seed for the random number generator is the grid square that you're currently entering. Uh, basically the, the X and the Y coordinates multiplied together. Um, so you start off in zero zero and then you know as you move as you move out of one grid square into the next it then increments those and moves over. Uh, I think I put the alt key was warp. There we go. So that has is, oh here we go. So you can see as we're moving along the the next set of uh, the next set of the play area is loading. Um, that could obviously be better done at the moment. It just goes, I'm there. Uh, the grid should probably be slightly bigger than t uh, one kilometer square as well. Uh, and basically what this does is this continually loads in. You can basically fly forever until you run out of uh, run out of memory. Um, uh, sorry. You... you know what? I reckon if you carry on going forever, you'll then wrap around into negative numbers. I'm not sure, there's no, I haven't put any guarding in, so I don't know if C Sharp, or, uh, the garbage collector and the, the CLI runtime has uh, bounds guarding on ints, I don't think it does. So yeah, if you keep going, you'll eventually get to like, you know, the trillionth grid square, and then it will wrap back round to the negative trillionth grid square and you'll carry on going. Um, so here we go, we can basically just fly forever, and that's that's what I wanted, so the the, the idea in the game was that you'd be able to just fly off forever um, and that is obviously kind of working here the the direct wow that's weird the dragging to set the heading obviously isn't working very well and it does seem to be uh, not working at all with the camera so 
the, the control system on this is basically crap. I just did it just to test flying through space. Um, I think I, <laughs> I just thought our little uh, our little mining drones we left them behind. Uh, they're now stranded in space. Sorry. Okay. So so what I can do is I think it's the control control key throttles down. Yeah. So yeah, basically that's uh, that's what I have with procedurally generated worlds. Um, the asteroid cubes are currently just cubes. They also take in the random number seeds. So when you go back into a good square, you'll always get the same cube with the same size, the same rotation, and the same position in space, and the same number of asteroids. Um, something that isn't in this but was in the original firestorm that we looked at first was that the world is the asteroid density is um, there's a, a bitmap image there's a, an 8-bit bitmap image and the, the value of each pixel is the um, the probability that you're going to get a um, an asteroid in that grid square um, and we we actually had like just a, a static image. We could use that uh, one idea I've I've been playing around with is if you simulated like an entire solar system, you'd want asteroid belts and things. The two ways I've been thinking of doing that is we could um, have an image that is used for like the the probability of asteroids um, in space. And when then when it loads in grid squares, it works out whereabouts on the the bitmap map of the solar system you are and then populates the grid square based on that um, that would limit the size of the solar system the other thing you do is get a bit more clever with it so having um, like the distance from the Sun so when we create um, things like asteroid belts uh, the probability of there being asteroids at a certain distance from the Sun goes up and down that could be a thing um, Uh, the other thing that we don't have is planets um, so planets could be either static in that we have programmed into the game Earth, Mars, Venus, whatever or we could be like, dynamic, dynamically doing them so um, minor planets and large asteroids that sort of thing which are going to be places where the player can visit and can build bases and build systems uh, They, we would want those to be um, procedurally generated rather than like statically saying that there are six billion minor planets in this in-game solar system um, so they're going to be procedurally generated the other bit here and we see here that the camera has just completely gone off there's the ship in the center there so the center of the, the center of the camera just doesn't work um, the other thing that I want to want to do with this is uh, the, a similar kind of mining, building, crafting system to, to sort of a, a game a little bit like Minecraft or Space Engineers or um, uh, what I actually really like is the, uh, the construction system in the, the sequel to Infinity Factory I can't remember what, or the, the sort of the spiritual successor to Infinity Factory, I can't remember what it is, it was released um, Scott Manley did a video on it about uh, three or four weeks ago, uh, and the idea is that you have blocks, and they when you put blocks together in certain patterns, put input in one end, you get things out the other end. So the idea that players could put together like you know refining stations that have like a refiner and a constructor, uh, and then you put iron ore in one end, which makes steel through the refiner, and then the steel gets pumped into the the constructor, and the constructor makes you know sheets of steel or something. Um, and basically, have it, it's like the crafting system is players putting blocks together to uh, to do, to like you know do whatever they want. So what I've been looking at is the is generating asteroids using um, when they're procedurally generated, they're like cube maps, like in Minecraft. Uh, and the idea would be to have uh, those cube maps are used to. Um, generate a mesh probably with like something like the walking squares uh, wandering squares I can't remember what it's called um, so that would then create like generate a mesh 
from uh, from the sort of procedurally generated bit on off bitmap of what's available on the asteroid. Uh, I think um, Space Engineers uses a similar similar thing that they're 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 meshing a, uh, uh, like an array of like on off bits, and then so you have like a, a 3 D array of bits saying rock not rock, and then when you when the game creates the asteroid, it then creates a mesh using those. Um, so I've been reading about how to do that. Uh, it seems fairly simple, and probably one of the one of the first videos that I'll be doing is basically going through doing that. So what I'll do is I'll exit this one, and then if we open up uh, somewhere in here, I had a demo where I was actually making the uh, asteroid blocks. I'll go and find that and then come back. I've just <laughs> I'm in the process of moving all my stuff onto a new computer, so it's kind of a bit uh, a bit weird. Okay, brilliant. Let's do that. <laughs> 